Happy Friday, and welcome back to Just Plays Tokyo Dark. Uh, it should be Friday by the time you're watching this. Um, I'm recording everything in kind of one go at the beginning of the week, so who knows what kind of week I've had this week. Hopefully it's been better than last week, because fuck last week. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're gonna go talk to Sachiko, shake her down for money for our new waifu, Welcome back! I think Tomo remembers you. Oh, hello, hello, one. Hi. You must be appreciative of all your help to make him help make him feel better. Although I've had to stop the deliveries of sashimi, even the smell seems to set off his bowels. Another quirk added to an already quirky character. <laughs> Maybe it's a sign you were right about the fish. <laughs> yeah. Um. Listen, we need to talk. Okay, sure. Uh, why this serious face? What's wrong? Look, I don't care about your business, but... I I will say, though, you've invoked not only the Collector, but also the Yakuza. Like... Um, I don't know if I should be judgmental or, or what, but... Uh, I am curious. I'd like to know how you got involved in this, but, um, yeah, I'm curious. I want to know. How exactly does the owner of a cat cafe get mixed up with Yakuza? Huh? What do you mean? I met someone recently who gave me a contract with your name on it to sign. I read it, and it seems like you owe them quite a bit of money. I don't know. 4500 for the rent for a place in, like, the 23 wards does not seem like it's that much to me. I don't know. Why? I've been around this stuff for a long time and I can't figure out how a cat, cat cafe owner owes this kind of money. Money? Akaza? Wait, you're working for her? Why? I'm not working for anyone. All I've got is this contract and your name, and I want to know why. The truth is, this place isn't all above board. Or it is, but it wasn't always. I didn't borrow money or anything that stupid. When I was setting up this place, I was just trying to stay above water. But the building owner kept coming by to complain, and these government types and health inspectors came knocking. I never realized how complicated opening up a place like this in Tokyo could be. Those rules and regulations? All I ever wanted was to help out the kitties and make people happy. And she came by, someone who loved cats as much as I did. She offered to help smooth things over with everyone. I mean, I saw the tattoos and everything, but I didn't think you should judge people because of how they look. And I still don't. There's no way I was going to stay open and keep my kitties if I didn't get help fast. So I accepted her offer and... Things got better pretty quickly after that. The building owners stopped complaining, and all the permits fell into my lap. Maybe you think I was stupid, but most of the cats here would be stray or dead if I didn't get her help. For a while, I thought I was saved by a guardian angel. After all, she loved the cats and was kind and friendly to me. But it's been quiet, too. The business with Tomo's bowels was the first incident I've had in months. About two months after accepting her help, I was closing up shop. Some men showed up with a contract, like the one you're holding. They said it was for services rendered or something like that. It wasn't much at the time, so I signed it. I owed her a lot, after all, and I was doing pretty well. Only, they kept coming back. And every time they came back, they had a new contract. Every contract wanted more and more money. It's gotten out of hand. I can't keep up anymore. Possibly won't even see me anymore to talk about it. Hmm. Didn't really think you'd get a favor from the Yakuza for nothing, did you? I wasn't being greedy, Ito. I thought she was trying to help. Hmm. Helping the only way she knows how. Please. You have to help me. The amount of money they've asked for is out of hand. I'm doing well for now, but if they got their way, I'd be out of business. 
You have to tell Kasumi. Please. Tell her that if this place closes down, all these cats, there'll be no place for them to go. Poor kitties. They'd be put down. I, I can't support them myself. I don't think animal service was, would let me keep them. I couldn't live with myself if that happened. I'm begging you, Ito. Don't do this. Hmm. I'm curious what I could... What am I gonna do? Like, rob a bank? Get the money? Like... <sighs> Damn it. Doesn't matter what I need from her. I can't make you sign this in good conscience. Hooray! I knew good would prevail in the end. Thanks! How'd you get mixed up with that woman anyway? Need some information from her. You should be careful. I don't know about her, but her thugs are dangerous. Last time they were here, I heard them talking about having to teach a girl from another cafe a lesson or something. Makes me feel sick thinking about it. What else would you expect from guys like that? Breaking legs is probably all they're capable of outside of grunting and drinking. Don't be naive, but I don't get how someone could be so two-faced. When I started seeing her face in the papers lately, I couldn't believe it. Surely that ruthless woman they were talking about couldn't be the Kasumi I knew. Or so I thought. I guess it's like you said. Tiger can't change its stripes, right? Hmm, maybe so. At any rate, you should probably be more careful with who you trust in the future. Sorry, I didn't mean to wrap you up in all this. But thank you for not making me sign. So, what's your plan? <laughs> well, after my brief stint playing a Yakuza game. <sighs> but by that I meant you and Mogul Toku. I'm not really sure that I have one. Maybe I can appeal to her kinder self. If she really is a cat lover, I'm sure she wouldn't want to see the little guys hurt, right? Oh no, I've really gone and gotten myself into trouble, haven't I? Maybe I should go instead. The contract was given to me, so I better deal with it myself. Plus, I get the impression that being confined by the cops hasn't put her in a great mood. I'm sure you don't agree, but I still think there's something good in her. And I'm gonna find it! Annually. <laughs> Sometimes I can't help but wonder if she'd be doing all these things if she didn't grow up into that life. And all the kitties loved her when they played with her. Cats are such good judges of character. I somehow don't think of her treatment of animals correlates too much with her treatment of people. I actually, you know, this is pinging a thing in my memory of watching, like I was a kid and I was watching a documentary about Hitler. And there was like this uh, Holocaust survivor that they were interviewing and she said that like she'd actually like met him or something when she was a kid. And he like came to like a concentration camp or something and she was like i i thought I remember thinking at the time he couldn't be a bad person because he was like being nice to animals um so like being mean to animals is usually an indication that somebody is kind of a kind of a, a prick but being nice to animals doesn't necessarily like mean the opposite Ugh. now i'm starting to feel a little queasy about going back there without the contract damn it ayami you've really gotten yourself into it into one this time haven't you no point dwelling on it for now. Made my mind up, and I can't run the Yakuza debt collections just because I'm in a tight spot. Take care. Don't worry, my kitties are never wrong in judging someone's character. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'll think of something, but, uh, need you to lay low and maybe close up shop for a while while I sort something out. Back to use the power of love! Hey, what are you doing here? Go back! <laughs> Me and Tomo! It's the adventure! <laughs> Ito and Tomo! Mysteries! <laughs> Honestly, little one, I don't want you to get hurt. Go home! Probably the only cop to enter Kasumi's private bar who isn't already in her pocket. With how things turned out, maybe that's not true either. Welcome back. 
I assume you took care of that little nuisance for me? I didn't have her sign it. I couldn't in good conscience ruin someone's life like that. Let me explain something to you. If I give you something to do, you don't come back until it's done. What? You think you're some sort of moral crusader? Helping out the little guy? What'd she tell you, anyway? That she was a small-town girl who couldn't keep up with the big meanies in Tokyo? Put it that way, I guess I do sound like I'm asking a bit much. Did she tell you about all the cats that kept escaping? Or the ones who wandered away to nearby businesses? How about the heaps of trash that were piling up around the place? If it weren't for me getting people off her back and cleaning the place up, those cats would probably be dead by now. What we have here, Detective, is a trust issue. You were too quick to take the other side because of who I am, or at least of who you think I am. Pity. Kazu! Yeah, boss? Take you toe outside and show her what happens when people disappear. Don't be too rough. I don't want a repeat of last time. Oh, and leave her face alone. I'd hate for someone to see a black eye and think she might be worthy of sympathy. Keep her jacket here. I like it. Very chic. Did you know my friends tell me when all the police raids are coming? It's pretty handy, really. As a matter of fact, there's one scheduled for tomorrow. I'll be gone, of course, but if they were to find this jacket, well, who knows what they'd think. It'd be a pity if someone recognized it. Kazu, escort her out. Good luck finding that stupid little girl. Tomo. Tomo. Minna no tomo dachi. Hold on, Kazu. Ito, who is this? He's, um, I guess he's a stowaway from the cat cafe. He is, huh? I love that I resolved this by showing her my pussy. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! I let the game get to me! I see. I... I love him! Oh, look at his squishy little face! Oh, I can't have a detective beaten around such a cute little face. What's his name? Beaten? Oh, uh, I think his name is Tomo. Tomo? <laughs> That's not much of a ma name for a man, is it? Hmm. I so call you Mr. Marshmallow. About that blackmail and beating. Oh, about that blackmail and beating? Oh, that. Forget it. Really? Oh. Good. Oh, Ito, lighten up. You're not a liability unless you start talking to your cop friend. And you wouldn't do that, would you? No. They likely wouldn't believe me at this point anyway. My thoughts exactly. So cheer up. How can you stay mad when you look at those big eyes and those little feet? I look at you and I see a woman whose priorities are all wrong, Ito. You don't appreciate what you have, only what you're looking for. That is, until you find it. But then what? What's left? That said, I was serious about one thing. If you talk to any cops about my business or my... Hmm, Affection for cats, or anything like that. That, mm, man, that sounds like an euphemism. Kazu might pay a visit to your apartment. Nope. Luckily, I have a cat there, too. But who wants to think about all the logistics of dismembering and disposing of a detective's body when you've got little whiskers running around against you? Huh, Sachiko was right. You do genuinely love cats. So why make her sign a contract that would end her without her having to put the cats down? Sachiko isn't as perfect and cute as she seems. She might love her cats, but she's had strange ways of caring for them. She owes me a great debt, and it's my right to collect it. If her cafe shut down, I'd make sure those cats have a home, though I can't say the same for their own. This job is about tough decisions, not legal ones like you, cop you cops make. In my business, you either have to sleep with the choices you make, not leave them at the door when you hand the case over to the courts. So about sleeping with cases. <laughs> Mr. Marshmallow likes being picked up. Oh. He is pretty cute. I'm not sure if you meant for this outcome, but I have to say, you have some guts coming back here like you. I thought you'd be another pushover cop to keep in my pocket. I underestimated you. 
and in doing so, I've given you information on my weaknesses. Hmm. It's funny, really. I spend so much time making sure I'm not seen as the weak woman that all these men expect me to be. But I don't feel like myself sometimes. Something I'm sure you understand quite well. Tell you what. I'll let you have that one little weakness of mine. It's only fair. I know so many of yours, after all. In a different life, maybe we could have been friends. Kazu, stand down for now. Ito, consider yourself lucky. I'll let you keep your jacket tonight. Understood, boss. Alright, forget the cat cafe. I'll get one of my boys to deal with it later. What is it you wanted again? I want to speak to Omega's company president, Higashi, about the girl assigned to his agency. That's right. Our missing agency president and one of his many... projects. What a despicable little man. I'll tell you now, I had no problem taking control of that business from him. I left him as president to keep a few of his clients happy. A decision I regret now. Unfortunately, I'm just as in the dark about where he disappeared as to you, I'm afraid. A deal's a deal, though. We were out, I got an address to one of his old hideouts and the code to get in. Oh, finally! I can't guarantee you'll find anything there. But I said I'd tell you what I knew, and that's what I know. You haven't sent one of your stooges to check it out for you? Oh, that was me, sorry. <laughs> you haven't sent one of your stooges to check it out for you? Stooges? I like you, but don't push it. As I said earlier, me and my men can't afford to be spotted right now. Especially in an area with so much- getting so much special attention. Special attention? Doesn't Kabukicho get enough attention on its own? Kabukicho is what it is. But this isn't in Kabukicho. This particular spot got its reputation and, subsequently, its extra police patrols a bit more recently. In fact, I hear there's still an ongoing investigation there. I heard you'd be intimately familiar with that area and the incident that happened there. My condolences on the loss of your partner, Detective Tanaka, by the way. I mean, I'm in the- I'm in the market for a new partner. All the papers are rushing to make it- make you out to be incompetent, or worse yet, some kind of psychotic killer. Maddening, isn't it? My friends in police headquarters say you two are close. There's no way to lose someone. I suppose it's not too much to ask what really happened. Was there really someone there that- Thanks for the condolences. But what happened on that night isn't something I want to discuss right now. Suit yourself. Let's change the subject back to Higashi. It took a bit of digging to find that address. Seems he was keeping a second hideout in Shinjuku under a fake name. Now that we know where it is, he probably knows too. I highly doubt he'd be stupid enough to stay holed up in it. But I also doubt he'd be smart enough to completely clear the place out before he left town either. There's probably something in there that would lead us right to him. Get what you want and then let Kazu know where the slime is so we can straighten him out. He'll get those fantasies of running away out of his head. The code to the door is 11235. Again, that's so close. 11037. It's, only, it's the only keypad lock on the street. Can't miss it. For what it's worth, I wish you good luck on finding the little girl, but remember, can't save them all, Ayami. Oh, and Ito. Thanks for bringing Mr. Marshmallow to me. Being holed up in one place for the last few weeks can be a bit taxing. You know, I remember he loves fresh fish. Fresh fish, huh? Sashiko certainly does have an eccentric taste. Kazu, go pick up some sashimi. Right away, boss. No, I want to I fuck the sexy villain lady. Let me, let me do it for Not exactly in the mood to dance. I should get going. What are you fellas up to? Nothing. Okay, cool. It's also funny because Kobukicho is part of Shinjuku. <laughs> like, I literally just walked from one side of the station to the other side of the station. That's literally what happened here. Miho. Sun. 
go. Boy. Just gonna stand there and look at me with your little puppy dog eyes. Huh, worked. Looks like Cosme's tip wasn't a lie. Ugh, what a stench! I know that smell. Anyone who's worked in homicide long enough knows it. I only lose one sanity for no buddy. Well, before we do that, let's... It seems to be locked. Can't open it. Can't. Seems like the inside of the lock has been filed off. Well, I suppose I gotta keep... move it all. Must be reinforced. Okay, well, I gotta get the key off the body, I guess. No good. It's as if something's holding it from the other side. Damn it! That did nothing but hurt my foot! Ripping isn't catching on anything. This isn't gonna work. This one won't budge either. There's no way I can kick this down. Locks have been tampered with, making them useless. It's hidden, being hidden in these rooms. Alright. The word Ruby is written on the wall. Ah, I see another man of culture who also loves Ruby Quest. This is the source of that smell, all right. This body's in pretty bad shape. Whoever did it took enough time to mutilate the corpse. Internal organs have been disturbed. Maybe removed? What's this? There's a paper bag with the name Higashi written on it. Did Vena do this? Where's the bag? Nothing's changed, just the door. Okay, good. I can hear something going on over here. So that's gonna be fun. And to see here, where's that noise coming from? Something is trying to escape from the inside. Also sounds vaguely like- alright, so I studied abroad at a uh, religious university. Like, I'm not religious and I'm not in any way connected to the religion, but I, st I did study abroad at a religious university. And so I'm pretty used to, like, singing and chanting and stuff like that. Stopped. Why? Shots of various girls. Love them taken in this room. You don't look like professional headshots an agency would take. Hey, it's stupid hair from Love Live. You all look so s and Komaru. <laughs> I look so sad. And young. I've got a pretty good idea what these pictures were used for. The types of people they might have been sent to. Aina? So it's true. I think you were kept in a place like this. What happened to you? Oh, so we do, we do actually care now. <laughs> huh? Something's happening. You're back early. Yeah, I, uh, I don't feel well. I think I'll go to bed early tonight. Ruby, don't ignore me. Lastly, it's been the same excuses over and over. 
I don't know what you're talking about. Ruby. My sweet little Ruby. You think because that one song was a hit, you can just stop working? That money's all gone, sweetheart. We spent it all trying to get you a record deal. Don't you think it's unfair to eat my food and stay here for free without doing any work? Ruby? Hey, stop crying. Stop crying! I'm talking to you! Please. I didn't mean it. I'll, I'll do another song. I'll, I'll make it up to you. I promise. I just... I just don't want to... That's exactly why I'm setting up all these meetings for you. You make the right impression with these guys, and they'll take you places. Speaking of which, I've got a little... I got a call a little while ago from Masa. Know what he told me? He told me you were being a little disagreeable with him last night at his place. You know that one of he, he's one of our best clients, don't you? The things he could do for you girls is... I shouldn't even need to tell you. He sent you to him because he said there was something special about you. In fact, he said out of all the girls, he particularly wanted to meet you. He did you a big favor by making that happen. And you compensate my generosity by sitting on a room, crying and telling me you don't feel well, whatever excuse you come up with next. I, I couldn't... He, he tried to... I don't care what he tried to do. You should have let him. When I took you in, you were a vulnerable, tiny girl who was already failing in school. I saw your potential, and I could already tell how pretty you'd be when you were older. That's all these men care about, how I look. So what? You think I took you in because of how smart you were? You're an idol. You're supposed to be looked at. Most men would fall over themselves to beat a pretty girl like you, but you ruin it for everyone when you sit there crying. What are you doing? Sick of looking like an idiot, Ruby. You made me do this. Hmm. Promising. I'm looking for cats. Uh, Alright, so let's continue on with our sad tale of abuse. Made my fucking heart stop for a second there. I really do not like idol music. I do your jump scare. Whatever. Oh, okay. Great. I need to freaking turn down my volume because I don't. I don't even care about the impending jump scare. I care about the freaking. I'm gonna take a sanity hit. Man. I'm already at negative 40. Man! Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Let's do our jump scare. Tracking in our VHS is so bad. I mean, I'm sure this isn't something I have to do, but you know. Song. It's obviously not an entire song, because if it were a real idol song, we'd be going for like five minutes. And I hope to God that Chris isn't doing that to me. <laughs> like... Look, you know, the sad, the sad taking advantage of young girls thing is bad enough, but having to do... Wow, that's it? Oh, my only reward was... Alright, well, now my sanity is completely, completely done. Alright, so now do I get the jump scare by trying to leave? I guess? Oh, I see.
it's funny because I know it says like U E, but I just every time I see it, my brain keeps parsing it as yeet. <laughs> like, Nor stopped. Oh, ghost nano. Damn it, Ruby. Can't stand to see you like this. You're not gonna feel better staying cooped up in here. Listen, got you that photo shoot lined up tomorrow. One with Masa. Are you even listening? Don't make me go back. I don't want to go out. Let me stay here. What's wrong with you? Please, please, don't make me. I'm afraid to go. As far as I can tell, all you're afraid of is success. Falling over myself to get make you a star. But all, you'll never go anywhere if you lock yourself away. What? Not going to say anything? You can't treat me this way. I give you your name, your music, damn near everything else. Oh, but you think you're special, right? Let me break it to you, honey. You're not. There's loads of other girls in this business just like you. And they do... And they do what they have to without complaining about it. They understand how important it is to keep clients happy. And I'm sorry it's not all butterflies and flowers, but you're not some naive little girl anymore. You're a woman now. Hey! Uh, to Ruby. <clears throat> I'm trying to give you some advice here and you're not even listening. Dana. My name is Dana. What'd you just say? Dana? Who's that? Oh, yeah. That was the name of some pathetic little foster girl I picked up. You want to go back to being her? Just say the word and I'll throw you out there myself. You think you've got it so bad now, let's count the seconds between you hitting those streets and being back in foster care or dead in some gutter. Not so talkative now, are we? Lena? Or is it Ruby? The girl who was successful? The girl who could make it if she would just do what she was told? Sorry. I'm sorry. I lost my temper, but you gotta see things my way. You were special, you know that? I see. I saw so much potential in you. Such a beautiful young girl. I wanted to raise you up and show you what life could be. Then you reject me and everything I can offer you. Damn shame. Still pretty, Ruby. So pretty. But not when you mope around. Look, I get it. You're a teenager. You wanna cry it out, right? Fine. But when you're done with that, you're going back out there. Think I want to send you to all those little meetings with Masa and guys like him? I'd rather you were successful so we didn't have to do that. I'm on your side. If you'd work harder, you wouldn't have to do things like that. Stop. Stop crying! You're not a child anymore. <laughs> I just want to go home. Home? <laughs> Where do you think you are? You are home. This is as good as it's gonna get for a girl like you. Tomorrow you're gonna go with Masa and do whatever it is he tells you to do. Stop this crying and you'll start making some money. <laughs> Maybe it was a mistake to think you'd end up being special. Turns out you're just another disappointment. Another whore. Something laying on the mattress. It's a newspaper article. Dated October 4th, 2004. The article's title. One hit wonder Ruby commits suicide. It can't be. It was over 10 years ago. Okay, I guess... I guess it's 2016? Her real name was withheld from the press, but her picture is here. According to the article, Higashi went to her room and found it locked. All the work she didn't answer. Thought she must have been tired, he said. She'd been working hard on a new song. He only forced the door when he noticed the smell where he found her hanging from the rafters. She hung herself almost two days before. Probably in this room. There's more. When Mr. and Mrs. Higashi had adopted her years before Ruby was not made to work. Loved being an idol more than anything in the world. The song Look For Me will go on sale again this month, with all sales going to various suicide prevention charities. I've read enough. The sadness that's in this room is the same awful feeling I felt in the sewers. 
Is it Nina's? Is this what I was supposed to see? Sick. That, that monster. How many girls did Higashi pass around and abuse before she murdered him? Nena. She looked the same as she does now. Sixteen years old. Child. How she had her locked up. She tried to take back control the only way she thought. The only way she thought she could, only. She came back. All that pain and suffering came back with her. I was in that room, I could. Feel it like it was my own. It's not the first time I felt it. The dark was steeped in it. As soon as I realized it, it's like what like the air changed. I can sense a pulse now. A heartbeat following me, but it's not enough. The mask could help me find the door. And I could feel the dark, but the path still wasn't open to me. What am I missing? That tells me it has to do with the Kamen Kai. The only one alive who knows anything about it is old is the old Kamana woman. She has to tell me what happened. Okay, well, we know whose stuff is in there. Good. I'm glad it's nobody we care about. Daizo, I'd like a hug. Miho, I'd also like a hug. Hmm. I am not doing so hot. Yeah, okay, see? If... It's the Metropolitan of Government Building. It's not the west exit. We could show us out the east exit. Uh, how's it go? JR Shinjuku Eki no Dashi Fuji o Detara Ia Ia Soko wa Atashi no ni wa Ai Yugi Bakubuki cho. Uh, I'm starting to lose my voice. <laughs> Makura. Makura is filled with so many beautiful shrines and temples, and lots of hikes in the surrounding hills. Kazuki and I liked coming there on our time off. It's also the place where my kamana was held at knife point last spring, and the place where I received the mask from her grandma. Alright, cool. Um, that's gonna be it for this week, everybody. Thanks for, for joining us. Um, and, uh... Yay! It's been an uplifting time with this game this week. <laughs> uh, Alright, everybody. Um, take it easy. I will talk to you guys later, and uh, have a great weekend. I will see you guys next week with more Tokyo Dark. We also want to start doing some uh, Deadly Premonition 2 as well to mix in here. Um, because I have been excited for Deadly Premonition 2 because it was one of those things that I was not expecting to come out at all. And, uh, and yet it exists and it's here, so I'm, I'm jazzed for it. So anyway, we'll start doing some of that next week. Uh, everybody take it easy and see you later. Bye!